I M H O Talk Show. Sir Charles, Miss Max, Razor, A A Ron, still here, y'all. Uh, remember, uh, doing these breaks, hit us up four three four four two two nine one zero one or hashtag I M H O Talk Show on all your social media platforms, including Gmail. So um, yeah, man, thank y'all. So we at the bottom of another show, mm. another good show. I like to think. Um, thank y'all. Keep keep the good feedback coming. Um, and uh, as promised. As promised, we are here right now with uh, the Virginia Expungement Council. We have three members with us. Uh, some folks' names may be a little familiar to you. Others may not. But uh, but we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty with them right now. So uh, we have representing the Virginia Expungement Council, Mr. Harold Foley. We have Mr. Whitmore Merrick and Sheba Williams. You know, first of all, you know, Happy New Year to y'all. You know, we made it 2021, y'all. So hope hope everybody's doing well. Families are blessed, but uh, you know, but for those that don't know, um, this year, this January, uh, the Virginia General Assembly meets um, and votes on um, a lot of huge things that uh, that would affect our community. And I think after you hear these good people talk, you're going to see how it connects even into conversations that we've had today and that we've right. been uh, having with the community at large. So. Um, Man, so you know, so I, I want want you all to you know to introduce yourselves, you know, for those who may not know you to, uh, to get to know you a little bit. So um, let's let's end on Sheba since, since she's gonna sort of take the lead when when it comes to introducing the council. And so let me kind of go round table on my screen here. I have Harold and I have Whitmore, and we'll go to Sheba to kind of kick into the council and, and what's on top of the agenda. So uh, Mr. Harold Foley, uh, go ahead and um, and, and introduce yourself to the people, my good sir. Hey, you. My name is Harold Foley. We don't know hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Max, we worldwide. Yeah. Don't forget, we worldwide, though. We outside, you know, we see Bill in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bring it home, well, Harold. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Harold Foley. I'm born and raised in Charlottesville. Um, I got, you know, some trouble in the early 90s. Um, mm. I got out, and I've been a champion to um, disrupt the criminal justice system um, in any means possible, from restoration of rights to, you know, reentry to um you know you know jail prison um um you know making sure folks are getting you know um what well, in covid to make sure that folks are not dying in our jail from right, covid right. Mm-hmm. um and so you know to you know um with uh police accountability so i am um i am a person who wants to make sure you know one thing that people don't understand people's like oh the system is so messed up the criminal justice system the system is working like it's supposed to work, right? Mm, facts. We, the people, have to disrupt the system. And so um, that's what I'm mm. about. I'm about disrupting the system. So thank y'all for having me. Absolutely. Whitmore. Uh, yeah. My name is Whitmore Merrick. I'm from the city of Charlottesville, Virginia. Right. Um, I started a movement called Freedom for Felons once um, I was released and I changed my life. Um, yes, now sir. I started working for Home to Hope here in Charlottesville. We've been running for a year now. Um, doing a lot of things, doing a lot of positive things for reentry for those coming home, connecting them to resources, food, uh, clothing, housing, a lot of other case by case um, situations that we help people with. Yeah. Um, and then that's how I got a, became a part of the um, expungement council and um, just advocating for not only um, just our restoration of rights, but expungement and and all sorts of things. So. Mm. That's nice. Me. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, good brother. Good work. Miss Sheba Williams. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am Sheba Williams. I am Richmond, born and raised. Right. Um, I lived in Tidewater for about 10 years. I was in between jobs before I returned to Norfolk State to complete my degree. Mm-hmm. And at one of those jobs, I uh, became a convicted felon. I mm. was wrongfully convicted for a crime that I did not do uh, as a result of being a partner at a job where a young lady had some substance use issues and she stole like more than $50,000. So when she got caught after I had been laid off, she pointed the finger at me. And, um, you know, that was my that was my personal entry into the system. But I moved back to Richmond in 2012 after completing my degree. My husband went to prison at the age of 15. Uh, was released at the age of 36 after mm-hmm. getting caught, getting getting into some crimes and learning the law after he was incarcerated. Right. So between the two of us, we put over a thousand job applications in mm-hmm. and did not receive one single call back. And that was the start of No Left Turns. So okay. I started a nonprofit organization called No Left Turns in 2016. And 
then Trump happened. Mm. <laughs> so we, we got involved in uh, <laughs> restoration of rights and voter registration because Governor McCulloch tried to do a blanket restoration of rights order for over 231,000 people. Um, mm. It was fought tooth and nail, went to the Supreme Court, and they rescinded all of those people's rights. So mm. we do person by person, making sure that people get their rights back. But not only that, making sure that they run for office, they become notary publics and they serve on juries because a lot of juries are not representative of our peers. Yes, right. So we got involved in some advocacy work and the expungement council was born out of um, my hero, Harold. And a couple of other others of us who are very passionate about seeing through that people do their time, complete their, their sentences, pay their fines, fees, and restitution, and they're done with it. But mm. as we know, in Virginia, you live with that felony forever. Mm. So we, we are working, like Harold said, to break down the barriers that say that you pay for something for the rest of your life when you make one mistake. Right. Mm. Big facts, big facts. So, well, first of all, Good. thank you all for your work. Um, your due diligence, you know, it, 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 I mean, this sounds like a, a, a awesome conglomerate, you know, this, this council bringing, you know, individuals, I'm sure there's other individuals such as yourselves that have just as, you know, like uh, poignant stories, right, and, and, and histories that, that sort of fuel you to, to do this work. Um, so we're here now, right, though, because so, I heard you mention, you know, Trump happening, but we, we made it to 2021, those of us, you know, who were blessed enough to still see this. So January 2021, as the Virginia General Assembly is meeting and whatnot, what are um, some of the specific issues right now when it comes to this justice reform um, that you guys are fighting for? So luckily and i get, i won't say luckily it was it was the twist of fate that george floyd happened and brianna taylor happened and this pandemic happened at the same time to mm. make people actually sit down and be quiet mm. and be in front of a television to pay attention mm. to you know things that have been happening in the black and brown community for decades you know everybody was was in an uproar about right the the maliciousness of the killing of George Floyd, but the fact of the matter is this is something that happens in our community since mm. you know that since we were brought over from Africa into slavery. Mm. It just happened that everybody was in a seating position right. and had to pay attention. They weren't running and at work and at the gym and not focused on this thing and it didn't hold one space in time. It has it has charted the course for us to be here today. So mm -hmm. criminal justice reform became a, a hot topic in this summer special session. People came to the conclusion that it is time for a change. Yes. And that is what, what led us to get together and make sure that things are seen through. So in the past, we have been kind of spoon fed tidbits and pieces of change. And, and we've been given band-aids to put on things mm -hmm. to say, oh, we're giving you this thing and you should be happy with it. But it hasn't really given us real change this Amen. automatic expungement mm. law will be the focal point for making sure that people are able to do their time and be more than their conviction so mm. while we've been fighting through all of the barriers that come with collateral consequences because you don't just you don't just get sentenced to a sentence and do your five years and pay your fines fees and restitution your family goes to Respect. jail or prison with you that separation from family leads to some mental health issues that leads to some barriers that cause you to lose your home your car your you know your connections with the community and then you come out and are faced with every application in your life whether it be housing whether it be employment whether it be volunteerism whether it be being a chaperone for your child at school mm. comes with that question are you a convicted felon so yeah. with automatic expungement, that removes some of those barriers and some of that shame behind, you know, people getting in trouble at one point in time in their life and having to deal yeah. with it forever. Now, so uh, what's coming up? Nasheed, Nasheed, if you can't clean it up for me a little bit, though, automatic expungement, who does that cover? Mm -hmm. so, let, so let's talk about the history of expungement right mm -hmm. now. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, if you are charged with a crime, that means that you're arrested. Somebody says you did a thing mm -hmm. and you go through getting arrested, paying a bond, paying an attorney, you know, missing time from work to go back and forth from court. And mm -hmm. then you prove you're innocent mm -hmm. and you're acquitted of a charge or you're found not guilty. Or somebody says, oh, you know, that wasn't that person. We have proof that it wasn't them. 
and you know that charges drop you're eligible for expungement and expungement means that your record is sealed from the public okay so you're eligible for expungement only for non-conviction if you go to court and you're con convicted of something you're never eligible for having this record sealed it is always accessible by the public it is always able to be used against you for anything in the future so the only people who are eligible right now are people who have not been convicted okay. but here's the problem okay. you can only get that expungement by petition which means that after you've gone through paying for all that stuff <laughs> and going through court all those times you have to petition the circuit court pay 96 dollars, and the fee varies based on locality mm -hmm. for each charge that you're convicted of to have permission to go before a judge and a prosecutor to say, can you remove this thing from my record? Now, you mm. you proved your innocence, right. but they get to determine whether or not this is removed right. from your record. That is our current expungement process. What automatic expungement does mm -hmm. is give a time period that says, OK, this person hasn't committed another offense. Let's take this thing off of their record so that it is it is viewable by housing managers and employers. So that is what we're fighting for, because. Okay. The burden of cost is one, but the mm -hmm. burden of living with this felony is the biggest problem. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Thank right. you for that clarification. Right. Now, now, and I know you were going to continue with something else too, and uh, we were going to take a quick break uh, in a moment. But, um, but to you know to clarify that as well, the reason I ask is because a lot of times we hear talk about nonviolent offenders, mm -hmm. um, and 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 mm -hmm. um, like so is is that on the table right now as well? Is, is that something separate that um that that is going up because I, I hear that that's that stays, that stays on it whether or not if it's nonviolent offense whether that should be expunged without you know without any issue either is that is that something that's on the table as well so when we going up in in this fight for 2021 there are going to be a lot of discussion about what charges should be expungable okay. and mm -hmm. a lot of people are going nonviolent. but my thing is if you meet me today and i am a teacher i am a mother i'm a business owner i am a college graduate but I'm also a convicted felon. Are you going to ask me if if I committed a violent offense in the past? Should that be removed from my record? Because I'm still the same dope ass person. Mm, say <laughs> mm -hmm. say That's right. You think about it. Like if I've moved on past that, mm -hmm. we don't mm -hmm. want to separate violent versus nonviolent because that's always been the tool that's been used to pit us against mm -hmm. each other to mm -hmm. not make progress. Mm -hmm. So how is drugs? How y'all doing? It's razor. So how is drugs violent, looked right? upon? Like marijuana, cocaine, crack, how how opioids, how how do they look upon that? Is that considered in this expungement, violent, nonviolent, up on the table, not up on the table? How does that go? So what's gonna happen? Marijuana is going to take its own course, right? Mm -hmm. Marijuana mm -hmm. is going to open the door for um expungement and the conversation around drugs. We we know that anything drug related impacted black and brown communities more so than any other thing, whether it be opioids, whether it be marijuana. But marijuana legalization is coming. It, it is coming. Yep. We have having conversations about making sure that we address past harm because we can't just legalize on July 1. We have to rectify mm. for the past harms of people who have been incarcerated and people who have been on parole and probation for marijuana offenses now that Virginia stands to make 300 million a year or more yeah. of legalization mm. and we also right. have to make sure that people who are going into the business and it's not just ownership right it's not just people who want to own a dispensary and grow marijuana it is people who want to be realtors and provide mm -hmm. security provide mm -hmm. HVAC services and plumbing and all of the different ancillary businesses to legalization. But right now, if you have a past offense, you have to wait 10 years before you can buy into the business. Mm -hmm. So the problem is you can't just legalize and expunge on the same day and say, we're giving you equal footing. Right, you know, right, Virginia right, right. has to be intentional about it. But when we're talking about other drugs, drug convictions are considered nonviolent offenses and they're definitely on the table. But you have people who are fighting against even that. Yeah, They're yeah. saying, you know, um, the opioid crisis is a health, public health crisis. But mm. crack cocaine was not. We were right. super thugs. Right? White, white versus yeah. black. But how do you yes, justify so. that now? In 2021, when you have all of this information and all of this knowledge about the harms that were intentionally caused, how do you say that opioids are 
different from <laughs> crack cocaine, powder cocaine, mm-hmm. uh, pills that are prescribed by pharmacies. That's right. That's right. Hey, so that is that's perfect spot. Like, thank you all for this info. Um, how about we take a break? And I'm um, definitely want Harold and, and Whitmore to, to chime in, you know, with some of the late work that, that, that they're doing. And, you know, you guys can def- update the community, the people on what it is we can do, like to help, uh, you know, raise our voices to this issue when it comes to our representatives. Right. So thank you all. So uh, we are joined with Harold Whitmore and Sheba of the Virginia Expungement Council. And during that break, y'all, if y'all have any mm-hmm. questions or comments, um, hit us at the station, 434-422-9101 or online. I am HO Talk Show. It's Sir Charles yeah. Max Razor, a Aaron. Y'all stay tuned. You're listening to In My Humble Opinion with Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis only on 101.3 Jams. I am HO Talk Show. Thank y'all for staying tuned, staying with us. Um, we are back. We're still here with um, the Virginia Expungement Council. We have Harold Foley, Whitmore, Merrick, and Sheba Williams. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Great information, you know, great, uh, you know, um, info for the community to be equipped with. Um, so just to let y'all know, we, uh, we, I think we received a call and, and something to the inbox. Um, one of the calls of Whitmore would be directed more towards you because I think the caller wanted you to, uh, to just expound on Home to Hope a little bit as far as like it role, the role that it plays, um, like, uh, within even this work. Um, and then Max, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. I think you had someone inbox yeah. us, right? Okay, so a little bit more about Home to Hope is we're here in the city of Charlottesville. Um, there's four of us with Home to Hope. Actually, there's there's more. There's there's a few more people to the team as well. But there's four of us uh, main main workers there that are peer navigators, mm-hmm. and we just connect people that have that have came back into the community looking for resources, mm-hmm. food, um, clothing, a lot of different other things, and um, We've been we've actually been blessed to help people with housing. It's been such a big housing yeah. crisis here, so that's one of the one of the major things we've been able to help people with up to four to six months of housing. Um, those that are um, eligible for that have just been um, released mm-hmm. into Charlottesville. Um, so uh, we do a lot of things with Home to Hope, and then outside of that, we also advocate for things that are more important, um, like expungement as well i i can't say more important but down the down the road is definitely very very critical you know yeah um, that's what really gives us more hope is you know that people like myself that changed my life right um can, can actually really change you know and 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 i had these barriers from 10 15 years ago you know? yeah and um we and just educating and just educating the youth and um the community on these conversations that are happening in the general assembly and legislation and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, getting more people like myself to be encouraged and influenced. Right. Right. You know, that's why I'm here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, man. And Miss Max, what's the question that you have for our guests? Yeah. So we had someone in boxes. Um, they are actually from North Carolina, but have lived in Virginia for approximately uh, 10 years. Um, they have some charges that originated after, out of North Carolina. Uh, they were drug charges, um, but the charges are at least 30 years old. Um, mm. and they said that they have uh, affected them being able to get a job um, until really the past few years. Um, and so they were wondering whether or not uh, the Virginia Expungement Council would be able to help them. Or is this a situation where they'd have to go back mm. to North Carolina to, to work on expungement? Anybody want to tackle that, Harold? Sheba? Um, I think I think she will have to go back to North Carolina to see what their laws are, um, to see if um, she had to do, um, you know, petition to the, the courts because mm-hmm. each each state has a different way of doing things as far as expungement. And so she has to go and see what, um, you know, what is uh, what she needs to do to get her um, her expungement there in North Carolina. Um, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, Aaron had a question. I believe Razor had something from the break. Yeah, I'll let Aaron go first. Right oh, okay. No, I appreciate the work you guys are doing. Um, I, I did another broadcast with a gentleman um, by the name of Greg West, and he has a program in Chicago uh, called uh, Felons with Futures. Um, it's a really good program. I'm mm-hmm. trying to actually get felons that are 
um, being released to start real estate careers and get into different things of that nature. On the broadcast, though, <clears throat> one of the things he talked about was the different levels of trauma that you go through mm. by being incarcerated. Mm. And he said there's the trauma that you hear when the judge hits that gavel. There's the trauma when you're actually locked down. The trauma that shocks your body when you're actually being released. And just the trauma of going back to the family. It's very interesting, and I think um, Harold alluded to it, that the system is working exactly the way it's supposed to. My question for you guys is that, is there any talk, you, you, you're mandated to have a parole officer, but will we get to the point to where you're mandated to see a black health, mental health professional mm, like um, for three to three to six months or for however long you need? Um, are any are any of those ideas being put forth from what you guys can see from a legal standpoint? Or is that something that we're just going to have to tackle as a community as one? I, I think it's well, going to be a community thing because I don't see Virginia lawmakers I'm be honest with you. Virginia lawmakers are, are about the stupidest people in the world. Not saying they're stupid. <laughs> you can say but, it. <laughs> but, but what it is is they're not educated on the issue, right? So a Virginia lawmaker actually have to live have live experience to say what you said about getting out or going to um, jail or even have, hearing the 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 the, the, the um, bars closed, right? Yeah. So if they don't have that lived experience, they don't understand that. And what I've realized about the Virginia lawmakers, if they don't understand it, they don't want to deal with it, right? And so we are ones who educate them. But I think, for real, I think it's going to be up to the community to take that initiative to say, hey, this person is getting out. Let's see if we can connect them with somebody who can get them right. some mental health. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that, and that's one thing that we do with Home to Hope. We, we definitely connect with you know, um, other agencies like Partners for Mental Health and, and things like that. And there's been a lot of discussions and at us as peer navigators where we, we walk with our participants and listen to, you know, what they're going through. But as far as um, mental health, that that's a very big issue that we're dealing with. I think somewhere in Philly that they're, they're helping connect, uh, you know, people that have been incarcerated, black men that have been incarcerated with other um other blacks that that have helped with, with help them with the mental health and stuff like that. So here in Virginia, it's tough. We we talking about Virginia where slavery first started. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know um, that that's that's the biggest thing with this expungement and why it's created with design. That's fact. Oh, um, just sharing something real briefly. Like Richmond mm-hmm. started a couple of years ago, their mental health docket and their drug court docket. <clears throat> so if you if you get a charge and they recognize they do an assessment and feel that you have some mental health challenges or you have some substance use challenges. Um, they provide wraparound services to make sure that you're not go- just going into that system. Nobody has ever come together to say, let's take care of people as they're going through prison right. and as they're coming home, because those challenges are great. And a lot of times people don't talk about it. You know, mental health is a huge thing in the black community yes. that we don't even discuss. So, um, well, while, while people say let's provide these wraparound services for pre-entry, we have mm-hmm. to provide the same wraparound services for trauma, for poverty, and for re-entry. Hey, before uh, Razor goes, can I ask y'all a question? For the, you guys been incarcerated, is that even an option when you're behind the wall to speak to a mental health professional? Like, like if um, you got a if, counselor, if, if Whitmore says, "I've got you, man. I'm just sitting here. I'm just going through something," because it's not even yeah. logical to that circumstance. You really should have access if you're trying if you're trying to attempt to have people coming out and be productive citizens. But as Harold said, that's probably not the goal. So um, mm-hmm. if you're trying to pr- produce productive citizens, why you really should be able to talk to a mental health professional while you're there? Because I think the outcome of what you're coming out with, it may not be perfect, but it'll be a lot better than mm-hmm. just having broken people in 99 mm-hmm. percent of the time, you know, so. Uh-huh. I'll speak on that a little bit. I know that I, I mean, there are counselors in there, but okay. it's about who you can connect with, mm, you know, yeah. and, and I felt no connection. So it really yeah. didn't, it really didn't it's help. That's um, fine. It's, it's too many people locked up. For the amount of, I say it's too many people locked up for the amount of counselors that they have inside there. Exactly. We know that. Right, exactly. right. Resources. And, and I don't think reentry starts soon mm. enough. You know, like you said, it should start when you get in there. Um, hmm. Instead of the last thirty days, ninety days, or a year, um, mm-hmm. reentry. I mean, it's to me from what I've seen is is trash here in Virginia. It is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fine. 
You're listening to In My Humble Opinion with Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis only on 101.3 Jams. And yeah, right. I think Razor had something. All right, now who who want to tackle this one right here? <laughs> All right, check check this out. I'm 24 years old. When I get home, I'm gonna just work at McDonald's or whatever, or get a little odd jobs. Why I need to be worried about this expungement? Because mm. I hope you don't want to work at McDonald's. For the rest of your life. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Work. Talk to exactly. Him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. but think about it. Let, let's let's be real though. You know what I'm saying? You you talk to the average dude under 30 years old about expungement. He really don't know what you're talking about. That means what, clear no. my record. That's it. Like it it. I clear my record, but what does that mean after that? Like they don't well, understand all the applications that you're gonna get turned down for. Well, for real, it's not even people under thirty. Even legislators don't even know nothing about mm. expungement, right? And so it's mm. like we got to educate not only the youth um, under thirty who got charges, but even people who over thirty, fifty, sometimes sixty, because everybody think expungement is you could do expungement one way, like. I got a felony. I can go get my, my record expunged. That's not the case. I think she will explain it. And a lot of people don't understand it. And people still today would, would want to have a conversation. People still think that they get their, their record expunged if they got a felony. You can't. And that's the problem, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, people without knowledge mm. is going to always think that things are right, that's, right? That's right. And so um, one of the things that we decided, too, is to educate the community about expungement because you know, folks don't realize if I got a non-process charge, right? And they think, oh, wow, I beat the system. 10 years of, ten years later, they go look for a job. That charge is going to pop up. Even though it's non-process, that don't mean anything. You know, um, my wife, she wanted to work for the school system. She Something happened 10 years ago, was non-process. And she had to wait three, four weeks before she can get that straight, right? So it's, and people don't understand. It's, oh, people always think it's, oh, it's felonies of who who should get expungement but in in virginia is it was the system was created for innocent people to get expungement right mm-hmm. um and i think sheba can expunge on uh expunge <laughs> she, sheba can talk about that right mm-hmm. um about what virginia did in 1977 um when they came up with the expungement law i'm oh. curious about the workaround for the expungement so your charges don't show on your record. You no longer have the box on your application that says, are you convicted of, you know, uh, a crime? But then the employer asks you, mm. right? So in that situation, you if your record has been sealed or expunged, you are not by law required to yeah. tell them about this charge. And the, the issue is, so I'm going to just put it out there. Felonization, the criminal legal system, the juvenile legal system is all about economic terrorism. Mm. It's not about public safety. Mm. It's not about making That's sure right. that my neighbor is safe if I committed a crime because I was desperate and my family needed to eat. It is about making sure that a certain class of people remain at that class. So mm. when you ask about why others should be um, you know, interested in this, why others should be advocating for this, it's because in, in this country, you are paying for the criminal legal system one way or the other. Mm-hmm. If you're not directly impacted by going to prison or jail, if you're not directly impacted by being found guilty of an offense or being found not guilty and it's still being on your charge, you're paying $30,000 per person a mm-hmm. year to fund mm-hmm. prisons when mm-hmm. we're paying $12,000 per student per year to fund mm-hmm. education. So one way or the other, you're paying for it. That is why people need to be in tune and people need to be advocating for that. If we say housing is a right, then the question about being a convicted felon should not be on any application. Mm. But And it's not required by law. Somebody at some point in our lives said that you can make so much money off of making it difficult for people who have conviction, yeah. right? It doesn't take away from the fact that you are impacting an entire family when you deny that job. It doesn't take away from the fact that Virginia Mm. Department of Correction boasts that they have the lowest recidivism rate in the country, which means that people are not committing crimes and going back to jail. 
Now, Virginia will give you college credits because they just passed a 26-year ban. They just got rid of a 26-year ban on getting the Pell Grants while incarcerated. Mm -hmm. They teach you all these trades from plumbing to electricity to, um, you know, HVAC and all of these trades. But when you come out, you have to go before a board, Department of Professional Occupational Regulation, and they can deny your licensing. So we're spinning wheels, wasting money. Um, on rehabilitation and then we're putting these roadblocks in front of people to make sure that they stay below a level so this is everybody's issue right not just people who've been impacted yeah you know that reminds me of too that's why it's important to pay attention to educate ourselves on the voting process because if i'm not mistaken ban the box was an amendment not too long ago right um like they got approved so that you could do what you just said you would not you know um you know you're not required to to uh you know um like to to give forth that that information Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as on, on, on the job application. So so what happens work. with Band the Box is you you get through the interview process mm-hmm. and you you do great. You know, you impress this person. Your skills are there and you're the perfect person for the job. They can offer you a job and then they can do a background check. Mm-hmm. So you quit true, a job true, that true. you had secure. And then mm-hmm. they can say, well, even though we talked about this in your interview, we can't give you this job because of this conviction. So yeah, Band yeah. the Box Been was there. also something that was designed to help people mm-hmm. that still kind of hurt people. I feel mm-hmm. right, right. So, so, uh, so guys in, in, in closing, thank you all for, for everything, but want to make sure, um, that you let that listener know what they can do. Right. Um, you know, like just the, uh, you know, the average radio listener that's, that's, that's loving what you're saying and hundred percent support. I'm like, what can we do as a community to help with these efforts? Very nice. Well, one of the things you definitely we want is to have more people involved. And um, with um, our expansion council, we have um, enough people who have lived experience, but we need more people. But we also know that we need people who don't have, you know, never been incarcerated to be part of this. Um, what I understand is. When you go into a room with a legislator and they see many people with different backgrounds and live experience, they sit attention, right? Um, so that's one thing. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to um, Sheba or uh, Whitmore. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to plug in real quick is January 20th. We will be having an expungement discussion um, via Zoom. Um, with uh, Sally Hudson and the Expungement yes. Council, us there will be there, and a few others as well. So uh, January January twentieth at five thirty. All right, thank you. you. Can make thank it there you. and support us. That and that it was, was something great. you guys said for January sixth, right? Was that the right date? Something's coming up. Did I hear uh, that January, early? so January 5th, the 5th. Crime Commission meets, okay. who is pushing the um, is pushing the expungement bill. January 6th, we have a webinar on fines and fees in Virginia and how okay. those impact people who are convicted of crimes. Um, also, January 20th, January 13th, General Assembly starts. Mm-hmm. So people who want to get involved, reach out to us. We need as many people as possible to talk to your legislators and let them know that this is something that you want for the Mm -hmm. community. Um, It doesn't have to be a personal thing because at any given moment, um, the police only have to get it right one time. Mm -hmm. You can be charged with an offense that is so minor, but it can take so much away from you. Mm -hmm. Think about the future of your your children. Think about your neighbors. Think about your community. Think about your your siblings, your co-workers, and everybody that these systems impact. There is nothing good about our criminal legal system as it stands. So, you know, be make it be more than just your situation. Yes. So you, so, can you leave us with a website or email address? How can people, I, you know, they can get reach, in contact they can, with you? They, they can reach out to mm-hmm. me. Um, I, my number is 434-409-0791. Or if they want to email me, uh, they can reach me at um, Harold, H-A-R-O-L-D, at Justice. Um, the number four all dot org. Um, we, um, like I said, uh, we are definitely we are need and of uh, more folks to help. But um, also, we can also educate folks about what what the issue is. So don't, so folks, don't feel like oh, I don't know much about it. Please just come in here and get educated about it, and you will be like, damn, I'm ready to GSD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for folks, <laughs> for you. For folks who don't know what GSD is, is get <laughs> break it down. Get it depends on what <laughs> it depends on what what um, place you in. Yeah, but FCC. get stuff. Yeah, get stuff done 
or get s done i guess with regardless and that's what we all about <laughs> yeah, just so, get something done that's right, 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 right yeah <laughs> and so so when you come to a meeting when you come to a expansion meeting we not meeting to meet we meeting to figure out what we're going to do for the next meeting and um have plans out so Big definitely if, definitely if you want to be a, a part of it we're gonna we're gonna put you to work because we're doing the work ourselves yeah hey hey and, right. I, and and while you edit hire our, our representative miss sally hudson right like that's an office that we need to make sure that they, that they know our email our address yep yep definitely blow her up um you know you can look up mm-hmm. online um if you're not from um Charlottesville and you listening to this and is another representative in your area you contact that person right find out who your legislator are to have that conversation and we can do that we can help you with that to figure to help you figure that out and help you with some talking points so definitely um reach out to us um you know we got the wonderful sheba who got hey. like tons of information you see how big her hair is right that's how much information she got <laughs> well thank you all though thank you but um no, I appreciate sorry, those, those were great closing words sheba anything else um, just get involved. You you start where you are. It doesn't matter how much experience. It doesn't matter what your issue is. Get involved and let legislators know what you want. And if they're not doing what they want, vote them out. That's right. They will run for That's office. Right. Take their position. Um, you know, this has been historically the time where people have gotten their voices heard. We all saw what happened in the summer when people collectively came together. We just need you all to come together and make sure that you know, these systems are broken down because they're not working for the people. They are only working for capitalism in Virginia. Right, right. Mm, thank I you. Say, right. Yeah, thank y'all. So thanks y'all. Appreciate um, it. We're gonna be in touch. Thank you for the information and uh for those links that flies, anything else we can share with the people and we look forward to having you back on for future conversations. Hey, thank you. Hey, one more thing too, Charles. We're gonna there's a paper going to come out about expungement. Mm-hmm. I'm going to send it to you. Um, and you, yeah. if you can put it up on your website, Please. Uh, it gives it gives the history, it gives information and tells everything you can about expungement and why we doing what we do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all. Y'all, y'all be safe. Good work. Great, great new thank year you. to y'all. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. So fam, we were just joined by Harold Whitmore and Sheba of the Virginia Expungement Council. And so stay tuned, y'all, because we will be right back to, you know, the close up and as only we can do. Uh, I ain't made show, y'all. Thank y'all. Hey, if there's anything else, feel free. We still here. 434-422-9101. And I ain't made show talk show online.